This film has been made available through the courtesy of the audiovisual section of the Illinois State Museum, Springfield, Illinois. Come and visit the museum. You are always welcome. These parallel wires make it easy to see faults in glass. This is a poor piece. Its defects are obvious. But faults in glass are not always so apparent. About a hundred years ago, German glassmakers were troubled by internal streaks called Schlierer. To reveal these faults, they developed the Schlieren system. In this Schlieren picture, all the black areas on the glass, or those bounded by black lines, are optically imperfect. The Schlieren system marks out regions where light has been bent or refracted in passing through the glass. Bending can be due to small variations in refractive index or to lack of surface flatness. This piece of sheet glass is the type often used for windows. One fault is noticeable at a glance, but in the Schlieren beam, many more imperfections can be detected. This system, originally developed for testing glass, is now used to study any transparent solid, liquid, or gas. A recent development has made the Schlieren effect visible in color. For certain purposes, color Schlieren has advantages because the eye is more sensitive to differences between colors than between shades of black and white. The main use of color Schlieren is in aerodynamic research in high-speed wind tunnels. There are always large density changes in high-speed airflow. These cause changes in the refractive index of the air, which by means of the Schlieren system can readily be observed and photographed. Wing sections are normally viewed in silhouette. As the air speed increases, colors appear wherever there are major changes in air density. Blue shows where the air is speeding up and therefore expanding. Red, where the air is being slowed down and its density increasing. Forming now is a shock wave, a narrow region across which there is a sharp rise in air pressure and density. Schlieren is widely used to analyze the position and movement of such shock waves, which are of vital significance to aerodynamicists. The positions of the shock wave, or regions of expansion, are shown precisely by changes in color. The colors, however, are selected arbitrarily and can be varied at will. The principle of the Schlieren system is quite simple. A bulb with a compact bright filament is used. It is masked to cut out stray light. A condenser produces an image of the filament at a slit. The slit can be opened or closed to vary the intensity of light. 
From above, it looks like this. A front surfaced concave mirror is placed at its exact focal length from the slit. Lenses can be used instead of mirrors, but mirrors are more common. Because the mirror is at its focal length from the slit, it produces a parallel beam of light. A second similar mirror is placed in the beam. This second mirror brings the beam back to a focus. In this mock-up, the camera is being put into position. It is set up beyond the focus of the mirror. The camera lens forms an image on the film. A lens is chosen so that the image just fills one frame of film. Looking through the camera, a plain, evenly illuminated field is seen. Anything placed in the beam appears as a silhouette. The sides of the wind tunnel are perpendicular to the light beam. They have windows of very high quality glass to minimize distortion. In this model, the airflow is from top to bottom. A mock-up shows the arrangement. The aerofoil section spans the full width of the tunnel. It is firmly clamped between the glass windows. It appears as a silhouette on the film. What happens when there is a shock wave on the wing along this line? A shock wave is a narrow region across which there is a sharp rise in density. The air density in front of the shock wave is much lower than the density behind. These variations in air density will affect the speed of light. Light travels a little more slowly in the denser air behind the shock wave. It gets slightly out of phase though the light still travels in the same direction and the wave front remains vertical. What happens in the shock wave itself can best be understood by looking at an enormously enlarged picture. The shock wave is very narrow, but when tremendously magnified, the density across it is seen to change gradually from low to high. When parallel light enters a shock wave, the wave front is gradually slewed around. But light always travels perpendicular to its wave front. So, the light leaving the shock wave has had its direction changed. It is this change of direction which allows the shock wave to be made visible. The light that has been bent by passing through the shock wave does not go through the same point as the unbent light. It is here at the focal plane of the mirror that the bent light can be identified. This is done by means of a color filter. The filter consists of strips of colored glass or gelatin. It is put in the focal plane. When the filter is correctly adjusted, all the unbent light goes through the central green strip. The ray that has been bent now goes through the red part of the filter. So on the film, the shock wave appears red. In this Schlieren picture in a wind tunnel, any red part is a region of increasing density. The blue regions are those where the density is decreasing. These are expansions. Light passing through expansions will be bent in a direction opposite to that of light passing through the shock wave. It will therefore pass through the blue part of the filter.
In high-speed flow, expansions always take place gradually and therefore appear as areas of color. Shock waves are sudden pressure changes and so appear as colored lines. The Schlieren system can be used to investigate a wide variety of aerodynamic phenomena. Here, the flow patterns around two wings are being compared at speeds just below the speed of sound. The upper wing is designed for subsonic speeds. The lower is of the double wedge, supersonic type. The movement of an aileron at the rear of a wing varies the shock wave pattern. Schlieren is the best way of studying what happens. In this picture, the rate of movement has been greatly slowed down. It shows a transonic phenomenon called aileron buzz. Nozzle design has a great effect on the performance of rockets. Schlieren shows up the flow pattern very clearly. This model of an aircraft is in an airflow at nearly twice the speed of sound. It is maneuvered from the rear on a sting. For experimental aerofoil sections, Schlieren is invaluable in giving a general idea of flow pattern without going to the enormous expense of building prototypes and making actual tests. This is a single wedge, useful for hypersonic speeds, but here being tested in the transonic range. So far, changes in refractive index caused by density gradients in air have been considered. Temperature variations will cause a similar effect. Even the air warmed by a hand can be observed. Or the air cooled by ice cream. This bottle contains a colorless heavy gas. Schlieren makes it readily visible. The presence of different gases combined with temperature variations makes flames a good subject for Schlieren study. A solution of sugar and water has a different refractive index than pure water. By Schlieren, 
we can see that the solution is heavy and sinks to the bottom. The behavior of sprays can be studied. The effect of pouring one clear liquid into another is made easily visible. The shock wave from this spark travels approximately a thousand feet per second. To show it, the movement of the shock wave has been slowed down 6,000 times. By increasing the sensitivity of the system, a number of secondary shock waves can be seen. Here, lukewarm water is being poured into the left compartment, cold water into the right. Contact between the warm water and the cold sides of the compartment give rise to slight temperature variations. These settle down quite quickly, however. Now, let them mix. The denser cold water flows in under the warm. When the water reaches a uniform temperature, the colors will disappear. Schlieren is a useful tool for research. It should be considered whenever changes in refractive index must be observed or measured. It has a surprising variety of applications. <laughs>